potentially up to 88% of American adults uh, have insulin resistance to some degree. So it is, it, without a doubt, it is the single most common metabolic or, or most common problem full stop um, in the world. It is the most common health disorder in the world. And, and that makes it doubly relevant. That means only 12% of people are actually metabolically flexible. That's right. Yep. Yep. So, so metabolic health is something only 12% of U.S. adults can claim. So shouldn't we be focusing on that, Ben? That, that's right. Yeah. So it seems like I like to use this analogy of a tree where com conventional medicine is looking at the branches and it keeps pruning the branches, but the branches are always blossoming again and growing back. Um, but if they're all branches from the same tree, let's just cut the tree down. And to a very real degree, that's what insulin resistance is. When we look at our diabetes medications, our migraine medication, our infertility medication, and our hypertension medication, and we think these are three different medications, three different drugs for, or four different drugs for four different disorders, um, imagine, uh, m my hope is that there's this liberation mentally and emotionally that someone can feel when they realize, wait a minute, I am taking four drugs to treat four symptoms of one common thread, one common problem. Now, I'm not claiming, I don't want anyone to think I'm claiming insulin resistance is the only single input into these disorders. Not at all. But it is a common one across all of them. And in some instances, like hypertension or infertility, it's probably the single biggest one. Yeah, great analogy there. So let's let's focus the conversation here now on, on type 2 diabetes and the way that it's treated by allopathic care. We know that the standard care of treatment for somebody who has type 2 diabetes is to put them on blood sugar reducing medications and uh, even insulin to reduce their glucose. So why is that just looking at the effect but not actually getting to the cause? What's wrong with that yeah. standard care of treatment? Yeah, yeah, that is just reflective of how our paradigm is wrong. We look at type 2 diabetes as a glucose disease. So everything we do is sort of viewed through the lens of, of glucose. And that means we, two things, it means we detect the problem far later than we could, and it means we treat the problem far worse than we ought to. And specifically, here we have two variables that are relevant in the person who's progressing towards type 2 diabetes. We have glucose and we have insulin. At the beginning, or what's happening through the life of this individual, they're coming in every year for their annual visits, and their glucose is staying normal. But the physician, the, the clinic will see, well, you're gaining a little weight, your, your blood pressure is going up. Um, yeah, you might have erectile dysfunction if you're a man or PCOS if you're a woman. But, but they, don't, they don't think of it as a glucose-related problem. They, they look at those as distinct because they see the glucose is staying normal, so you're fine. But then what's happening behind the scenes year after year after year is that the insulin is going higher and higher. So this person who's progressing towards type 2 diabetes has insulin levels that are several times higher than they used to be but it's enough to keep the glucose in check and because we look at type 2 diabetes as a glucose problem it goes undetected we keep seeing all of the glucose is normal so you're fine you don't have you're not moving you don't have prediabetes or type 2 diabetes but then it's only once the body has become so resistant to insulin that even though it's swimming in a sea of insulin it can no longer control glucose insulin just isn't working as well at the muscle which is the main consumer of glucose as it used to and so in the midst of this high high insulin or hyperinsulinemia, we start to have a mounting and growing hyperglycemia. And then we detect the problem, potentially decades after the insulin had been up. Now, so that's the problem of detection by looking at type 2 diabetes as a glucose disease. But then the problem of treatment goes along those same lines, where we have the individual who has high insulin and high glucose. And because conventional medicine only cares about the glucose, one strategy then is to just push the insulin up even higher. Remember, it's already high. There is a profound myth that in type 2 diabetes, the insulin somehow drops to zero like it does in type 1. That doesn't happen. In type 2, it's gone very high. It might come down a little, which amplifies the glucose even more, but it's still significantly higher than it was before the process ever started. But then to kind of rewind back to where we were, we have high glucose, we have high insulin, and then conventional medicine with only a regard to the glucose will say, let's push the insulin up even higher by giving the person insulin injections or drugs that will force the beta cells to make even more insulin, and it works. It lowers the glucose very, very well. But just, just to reflective of just how 
the fact that this isn't a, a, a glucose disease. It works in that it lowers the glucose, but we also make the patient get fatter and sicker. They literally die more when we have to push the glucose up even higher. That just reflects to me the reality that type 2 diabetes is not a glucose disease because we can increase we can improve their glucose and put them in a normal glucose ranges by pushing their insulin up even higher than it ever meant to be and we kill them faster in fact they're three times more likely to die from heart disease once we start treating a type 2 diabetic with insulin and then maybe just once again to use what is one of my favorite analogies giving a type 2 diabetic insulin is analogous to giving an alcoholic another glass of wine where we're giving them more of the very thing that's caused the problem and I haven't elaborated on the causes of insulin resistance that's something you and I spoke about in previous sessions but essentially too much insulin is one of the primary causes of insulin resistance just like too much alcohol is one of the causes of alcoholism and, and how foolish is it to think that giving the alcoholic a glass of wine and say this is going to help your alcoholism well it, that's very much in my view, similar to giving a type 2 diabetic who's swimming in a sea of insulin, even more insulin, hoping it would solve the problem. It doesn't, because it's an insulin problem, it makes the problem worse.